stitchy friends welcome to the starlight stitching co floss tube video number 24. today is friday october 13th my name is amanda corbett and my company is starlight stitching co and welcome if you are new around here welcome to returning welcome back <laughs> to returning viewers i appreciate each and every one of you that chooses to stop by my little corner of the internet I am here today to share with you some cross stitch, some finishes, some fully finishes, some whips, and a little bit of knitting. So I hope you have a lovely beverage and maybe some stitching or crafting with you and you enjoy the video. Now let's see what finishes I have to share with you. The first finish I have is a big one that I am super excited about. And it is Autumn Love by Lori Holt. So I started this chart almost exactly a year ago. <clears throat> Pardon me. And I've loved every bit, every single stitch of it. And here she is fully finished <clears throat> I'll try to not have the glare of the light in there, in all of her glory. So I stitched this on a Charles Craft linen, 28 count linen, in the color tea dyed. I used the called for DMC threads, and I just switched up some of the colors in some of the locations. So the pattern called for a light gray house, I switched it to blue. The pattern called for these little scallop details to be stitched in a gray and I stitched them in white and instead of the gray in these cornerstones I used the pale yellow in the pattern so I used all the called for colors I just moved them around a little bit and then she is finished in a custom sized frame from the rusty roof and she is gorgeous and I love her and even though it is an autumn piece it will probably stay out long past autumn because it is just so beautiful and I'm super excited to have it done this is such a big piece Ugh, I just want to sit here and look at it all day but moving on to the next full finish this is one I started more recently it is Autumn Alphabet by Primrose Cottage Stitches. And I stitched this on a 32 count LFA linen in the color Millstone. And here is my finish. My light is giving me a little bit of shadow from this bow. But that's okay. Here she is. I did switch out some of the floss colors, not because I didn't like the ones that Primrose Cottage picked, I just didn't have them on hand. So I was trying to shop my stash and be economical, and I did share that conversion on my Instagram in case you were interested. And this finishing piece I picked up from the fall section at Walmart. So it looks like this. And it was $3.84. It's called So Very Blessed Tabletop Decor. Very inexpensive. I wanted to stain the frame to give it this brown wood tone, but I couldn't find any stain. I mean, I could have gone out to my husband's wood shop and gotten some, but that was just too much work for that day. So instead, I took some brown and some a little bit of black acrylic paint and just mix them together, not all the way, but just mixed them, and then brushed it on and then wiped it off with a paper towel. So kind of like you would with a stain to kind of like paint wash it. And that turned this pine wood into this like faux stained look. And I probably should have sprayed a sealer on it, but I didn't and yeah. So here it is, it is finished. I mounted the cross stitch piece on some foam poster board that I got from the dollar store and then surrounded it with this green pom-pom trim. You can see just a little bit of the edge of the 
wood piece. So I just glued, hot glued the pom-pom trim on, and then on the top, hot glued some fall leaves and a fall pumpkin pick and added a bow. And this sweet little shelf sitter is ready to display for fall. I absolutely love it. Beautiful. So those are my two full finishes. I do have one finish to share, and this is my own pattern. So it's not fully finished, but it is a finish, stitched finish. And this is the October Birdhouse, which is a freebie on my website until November 1st. And after November 1st, it will be a low price pattern. So you can see this sweet little birdhouse is full of all sorts of fun details. I imagine this little birdie here is, is a witch or is doing witchy things. Um, instead of a post light, we have a jack-o-lantern on a post which with its uh, little spider friend. A simple little patchwork quilt because all of my birdies love to have their quilts hanging out to dry. A pumpkin down here by the door and a cauldron with this spooky green fire underneath it that's steaming away. Another little spider friend. You can see the chimney with the smoke coming out from whatever's going on inside and then some birds flying around because what spooky scene doesn't have some birds in the sky. And it's just a fun little wonky house. Um, I tried to go for an argyle pattern on the house, the main part of the house in purples. And then this extra little wonky dormer is in a like acid green is what I envision and a darker green. So, and the, the little wrought iron fence hanging down from the bottom just to give it some more spooky detail. So this is super cute and I need to get it fully finished so I can display it. But if you are interested in that pattern, it is available on my website and I will also include the link in the description box below. I almost forgot one finish. I can't believe I did that. My last finish is Christmas Rules by Primrose Cottage Stitches. They just have such great patterns, don't they? They like to incorporate a lot of fun details. I started this with the Sal. When was that? I think it was last year. I'll have to look. I don't have that information with me. I started it last year, and this is on a 32 count Zweigart raw gold linen. And I did use um, over dyed colors, so ribbon red. I think I shared that on my Instagram at some point. Um, if you'd like to know what those are, just leave me a comment or send me a message and I will dig up that information for you. But this is a finish. I don't know how I want to fully finish this yet. I don't know if I want to do a bell pull like I did for the autumn rules with the quilting around it, or if I want to find a hard finish. I don't know. This one's a little bit smaller than, than the autumn rules because I used a 32 count instead of a 14 count. But I love it, and it is beautiful and sparkly and gorgeous, and it's finished. So now I have an empty project bag. That won't last long. Now we can go into whips. So my first whip is actually a new start. I was watching the Fat Quarter Shop floss tube yesterday gives you an idea of how new of a start this actually is. And Kimberly was talking about how she was stitching Stitchy Stars in the Autumn Color collection that Lori Holt picked out. And I just had the thought, oh, what if I stitch that 
in the same colors that I used for Autumn Alphabet. Wouldn't that look so cute next to it? So I pulled out my Stitchy Stars pattern. I've already stitched the patriotic version of this and fully finished it. It's in a bin with all my patriotic stuff, so I haven't uh, dug it out to show you. But I've stitched it in the patriotic version, and now I want to stitch it in the same colors that I used for the Autumn Alphabet. So I started this, just a little start, and this is on a 14 count Legacy by Picture This Plus, I believe. So I cut it to size, and I just have a small start. But you can see that lovely variegation in that desert mesquite, hopefully. I need something white to put it against so you can see it. Instead of flopping it around for you. There you go. You can see the colors a little bit better. So I just started on the centermost block. Yeah, the center one. And that's where I'm at. Little bitty start. Let me get this tucked away here so I don't lose anything because otherwise I will. It'll fall out and be gone forever. Okay. And my last cross stitch whip is Let Love Rain by Teresa Kogut. So this is the big sampler I started as a birthday start. And I am changing up the colors just a little bit to brighten it up. I do have that color conversion listed on my Instagram. And here is where I'm at. I really need to start showing a picture of what it looked like last time. I'll try to start doing that next time. But here's where I'm at now. I finished these flowers in the center and have moved on and on my green border I've made it to the other edge of the pattern. So this is how wide the finished piece will be. See if I can get it up close for you to see better. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> I just love it. I'm loving every, oops, sorry, bumped the camera. I'm just loving every single stitch that goes into this. And here is the full size of my blanket that I'm working with. Uh, this is a 32 count raw silver linen from Zweigart. And I am using a mix of colors, mostly color and cotton that I just pulled from my stash. I like to shop from my stash when I can. Uh, now on to knitting whips. So first I have my laurel shawl and I am knitting this in some Bumblebee Acres yarn in the colorway called Dragonfly and Amber. And, excuse me, I only added maybe a handful more rows to this. I didn't get super far. But I love how it works up. It's just a little sparkly, but still very soft. And I love these very autumnal colors in it. So gorgeous. So I will keep at this one as time allows. Sometimes when my brain is just fried at the end of the day, I like to pick up my knitting because it's just such a nice rhythm. And then I shared this little start last time. I am working on another Musselberg hat. My pattern's been... Uh, folded and refolded many times. And for this, I am using a Malabrigo Arroyo yarn in the color Escoria. Sorry, reading backwards. I'm a little slower at it. And <laughs> it's hard to see, but here's my progress. So last time I shared it, 
I was probably about halfway through the increases, so somewhere around here. And I've completed the increases. This is marking my front and the top of the increase round. And I am just happily knitting away in the stockinette portion. I know it's a little hard to see and recognize as a hat because it's squished up on the needles, but look at how pretty that yarn is. Ugh, and it makes such a soft, cozy hat. So I recently finished this one, which is for a Christmas present in a different Malabrigo um, yarn called, the color is Sirius, like Cirrus Clouds. It's blues and blacks and grays and navies. And then there's this one that I'm doing in the Escoria, which is more uh, earthy tones. So like greens and browns and blues and blacks and grays. And this is my second go at the Musselberg hat, obviously. And it just looks really nice, if I do say so for myself. I don't think I've majorly screwed up anywhere or have any obvious wonky stitches yet. I mean, I've got a long way to go of knitting, but I'm just thrilled. Knitting is something that I have always wanted to do for many years, but I've always been very intimidated by it. Like, this is something that looks really hard. I don't think I can do it. And with some time and practice, I'm just so thrilled and proud of myself and loving every single knit stitch I get in because it is something that I was um, a little scared to try before and now I'm learning how to do it and having a blast. So that is all I have for whips. One piece of haul. I've been very good. Although I do have a couple of things on the way now, but we'll talk about that next time. So this is my Bestitch Me fabric of the month. It is a 14 count Ada in the color Boneyard. A very spooky name. And here's what the fabric looks like. The color is definitely like a creamy yellow base. with some definite blue modeling. Like not quite navy, not quite royal blue, just like a medium blue. And it is very pretty. I don't know what I'll use it on, but it is very pretty. So that will be going into my stash. Shop update, I am working on finishing up the gingerbread cookies and the autumn home totes today. I have them all in a stack right, right, right here. You can't see them. Uh, to finish up the sewing and then get them packaged up and in the mail today. And I have some samples to share with you of what will be in the shop on Sunday the 15th. So first, I have a couple of versions of cross stitch totes. This is in the Teresa Kogut Christmas fabric. So here we have the snowman print with the Christmas trees in December 25th. So cute. Uh, if you haven't seen my totes before, they have one large vinyl pocket on the outside. This is meant to hold your larger eight and a half by 11 patterns. Then you open it up on the inside, and there's the fleece bed. There's this small vinyl pocket with a hidden inside pocket. Perfect place to keep scissors. A large vinyl pocket on this side, as well as storage behind each side. Felt for your needle and a loop of ribbon to hold your uh, scissors to or to hold a floss ring onto. I like to use it for a floss ring, personally. So there's the snowman Teresa Kogut version. And then we also have some of the green Santas. So this is the same thing with the green Santas. And here is what the inside looks like with those adorable reindeers. Reindeer, 
reindeers. Which one is correct? Then I will also have a small collection of clutches. I oops, sorry, I bumped the camera again. Uh, I haven't finished the samples for them yet, but I will be working on that tonight. So I will have some clutches with the reindeer and red stripe binding. Then I will have some in the Christmas Adventure blue. And then some in the Christmas Adventure green. These are such adorable prints. I love the little hoops. They look like embroidery hoops that are filled with stitchy decorations to me. So those will be available in the shop on Sunday the 15th and soon, very soon, um, I will have the tutorial and pattern available for the cross stitch tote. So I have those, the video filmed, it needs edited, and then I just have to type up the pattern and that will be available. So you can sew up your own cross stitch tote. For plans, I will continue working on my muscle bear cat. That's a Christmas present that I need to get finished. And for stitching, I will probably just focus on my Let Love Rain and my Stitchy Stars and maybe one of my other smaller autumn pieces. I'm trying to keep things a little simple right now. Uh, life is, is a little crazy at the moment. I will share a bit more about that next time. Speaking of next time, um, my next floss tube in two weeks will be my one year floss tube anniversary. So that's one whole year of sharing floss tube videos with you lovely people. And I have a lot of prizes that I want to share with you. So please make sure to stop by next time for that. So that is all that I have for you today. If you haven't already, please like the video and subscribe so you can see future updates. And I hope you have a fabulous weekend and get some stitching and some crafting time in. Thank you for stopping by.